an article that came out, and it's very fucking neoliberally biased. It's crazy neoliberally biased. I kind of wanted to talk about it because it's fucking crazy. Right? Uh, it's from the, the Blue Route, uh, I believe is this thing. I don't know uh, too much about this publication, but I could get a sense that they were, uh, you know, pushing for that moderate centrism of, like, we need to just compromise with everything. Uh, I know we want health care, but, well, but let's do health care for a couple of able words. You know, we'll give health care to a bunch of rich people. We'll see how it works out for them. If they like it, then we'll try to give it to, like, seven or twelve poor people in the country. Um, and, it, and the way that we'll take the seven or twelve poor people is by doing a battle royale. Um, and then the, the top seven to twelve will get help in And who cares? The rest will be dead anyway. Like, that's the way that this guy, you know, this, this publication seems to talk. Uh, this dude makes a case for Elizabeth Warren to be Joe Biden's VP and basically says a Biden Warren 2020 ticket would be the unity ticket for the Democratic Party. And holy fuck, could I not agree with that less? <laughs> That's such a bad ticket. Oh, God. I know I have friends that like Elizabeth Warren, and all I love all of you as people, but I can't stand by this fucking woman. Just can't do it. Oh, she sucks. She sucks. Anyway, uh, what this guy says is uh, a VP candidate should not cause any harm um, and uh, should share, uh, should shore up the deficiency, basically where the president... Uh, falls back, uh, they should be able to pick them. Now that first part should not cause any harm. I think uh, I think a, a VP candidate should uh, be able to uh, uh, kind of push back on the president a little bit to be like, hey, I think you're I think you're going a little a little over to that authoritarian side. I don't think this is right for the people. Like if you're if you're if you're talking about benefiting the people, I don't think this is going to do it. I think you should have some... You need a William Riker to your Captain Picard. Um, that's that's what a VP candidate should be. It should be a Riker to your Picard. It should be somebody that should be brave enough to say, I disagree with what you're doing. Uh, and come up with a very good reason and, and have a conversation about, Hey, uh, look, I'm on your side. I'm your friend. I like you. I'm your VP. Uh, and I don't, I don't know if this is the right way to go about this piece of legislation, or, and so on and so forth. Um, so, um, this guy basically says, no, they shouldn't be able to do any harm. They should just kind of sit back and let you do what you need to, and kind of be your hype man, kind of be, uh, they, they, instead of being uh, your Riker to your Picard, you should be whoever the music musician that leads the band in the late night show is to the late night host. That's what you should be as a VP candidate. And he basically says, well, Warren can do no wrong. Well, fuck it. She's done plenty of harm to herself and her campaign. The Native American thing didn't do any, uh, didn't harm her campaign. Her attacks on Bernie, the way she lied about Bernie has done harm to her campaign. The super PAC that she's not really answering for has done harm to her campaign. So this notion that this guy comes out and it's just like, well, listen, listen the board can do no harm. She's kind of a perfect person. He's like, the fuck she is? You gaslighting motherfucker. Yeah, you can just ignoring the entire last year. She fucking went after Bernie in a bunch of debates. That's not a progressive. It's doing harm. She went after Biden. She's gonna do harm. She has done harm to herself. Lunacy, that is. That statement is. Then he goes on to take pot shots at Bernie, right? He calls him the old grumpy man. He's like, dude, are you forgetting that you're fucking writing about Joe Biden? 
No one is, like, older, angrier, and grumpier than fucking Joe Biden. This is a fucking dude that, that, that when climate change activists were like, what are we going to do about these pipelines? He was like, you should go vote for somebody else. And then he fucking, anytime someone challenges his authority, he's like, hey, you're a fucking idiot. Go fuck yourself. Don't ask me questions like this, you piece of shit. You millennial motherfucker. I have no empathy for millennials. That was at the top of his fucking campaign. I have no empathy for millennials. How do you forget you're writing about the angriest, grumpiest, oldest candidate? And then you have the balls who called Bernie old and grumpy? Yeah, guess what? He's grumpy about people not having health care, and a lot of people are. And I feel like if you don't have health care, if you can't afford health insurance, you are allowed to be as grumpy as you fucking want. Just grump away. But if you're Joe Biden and you're a rich old white man that has fought for segregationists, that has fought against the civil rights movement, that's fought against black people and women and all minorities in this country, you don't you don't get to be you you are you're you're the bad kind of fucking grumpy. And you don't fucking get to be that way because you've lived a cushy, privileged fucking life. guy goes on to basically say that Warren would compromise with Biden, right? That she'd be able to get, uh, like, health care for all initiative, Medicare for all initiatives, and free college, like, all these progressive things that we talk about, like, uh, you know, uh, um, um, a universal public education, public parks, public health care, all these options she'd be able to compromise with them. Again, yeah, I'm sure she fucking would, but she'd be compromising our rights and our health care. We've been compromising that shit all this entire time. Why are we still compromising that shit? The people haven't gotten shit out of these compromises. Corporations have, the pharmaceutical industry has, fucking insurance lobbies have. Why are we compromising this shit? What's the point of it? We need less compromising is what we need. We need more fucking legislation that actually benefits people. Elizabeth Warren, she has a plan. Yeah, just because she has a plan doesn't mean that it's a good plan. I know I'm going hard on the pain on Warren, right? And I know I have some I know I have some friends that like Elizabeth Warren that voted for Elizabeth Warren, but look, just because I go after your candidate doesn't mean I'm going after you. I'll sit down and talk about you about these ideas and how we on the ground level are gonna achieve. What this is, is the status quo of patterns that let us exactly where we are today. And it isn't going to, it it isn't going to do anything for us. The world is changing and we're progressing forward and people like Joe Biden want to keep it exactly the same instead of being like, oh, maybe we should start thinking about other people instead of just ourselves. Convincing other people that thinking about ourselves is actually going to help other people. Nah, I fucking ain't. Never has, never will. Hyper-individualism doesn't help anybody except the one person. And, it, and realistically, at this point, it's not really helping anybody. Biden warrant ticket ain't gonna do shit. There's another article that came out that made a case for Elizabeth Warren, right? And here's the thing. Uh, it, it was written by a Warren supporter that worked for the Warren campaign. I believe the the husband uh, made Warren's logo. Uh, So it's tinged with some bias. Uh, She talks about the Consumer uh, Financial Protection Bureau, which I think is the only good thing that Elizabeth Warren has done for the people is enact that thing. I'm not going to discount her for that, right? I think that is a very good thing. I think that is an important thing that she put out there. I won't won't discount that. Uh, But the author re-emphasizes a bunch of her lies. Uh, lies like getting fired for being pregnant, which a bunch of people prove wrong, and, you know, that's still a narrative that she keeps, right? Like, everybody's proved her wrong, everybody called her out on it, and she's like, I'm not gonna answer these questions, and I'm just gonna keep reiterating these lies. That's what she did, that's what she does. Then she did the same thing with the Bernie thing, right? She didn't really fucking say much about it, 
and then she just got mad whenever somebody asked her to like clarify what the fuck is going on. Uh, she talks about Elizabeth Warren's ability to see problems before they happen, like like staying ahead of the pulse on things. But here's the thing, fucking Bernie Sanders has been calling out problems for th that, that we're seeing today for 30 plus years. So, if you're gonna say that Elizabeth Warren was calling out problems in like the mid 90s or some shit, yeah, uh, Bernie Sanders was calling out these exact problems in the 60s. Not a great argument. Not a great argument. And this is where things go downhill with this article. Uh, they've kind of been teetering, right? Like, we're, we kind of went, uh, you know, like, nice opener starting about, oh, this is why I support Elizabeth. Okay, that's fine. Uh, and, and then, uh, and then we kind of got on this rocky ground, and now we're just going to plummet. Elizabeth Warren, she says, is not tainted by the word socialism but rather she wants to purify capitalism. What? You want to purify a system that some people intrinsically believe, and I'm starting to lean in this direction more and more, some people intrinsically believe is particularly meant to fail and not work for the middle class. It's a system that constantly Itself to keep itself alive. You want to purify that. To what? Look, when you purify a demon, it's no longer a demon. So if you purify capitalism, it's no longer going to be capitalism. Capitalism, unfortunately, is a system that is corrupt by nature. So if you're going to purify it, it's going to become something different. It's not going to remain Capitalism. You know, for a little while I thought, um, I, went, I, I went back and forth on this idea. You know, Dr. Richard Wolf, uh, uh, one of my favorite economists, would, would talk about how the, the inherent nature of capitalism is, is rooted in corruption, it's rooted in inequality. And, and I thought, well, you know, it is a system that is supposed to benefit the most amount of people, but, uh, but I'm, you know, the more I keep thinking about it, I don't know, I don't think it is. I don't think it is a system that is meant to, uh, to, I think it says that it's supposed to help the most amount of people, but really it's, it, it's, it's, if you let capitalism run the way it wants to run for a long enough period of time, um, because it's rooted in corruption and greed, it's not gonna, it's, it's gonna only benefit the people that want to be rooted in corruption and greed too. And everybody else that, is, that wants a system based on social justice, equality, uh, and, uh, and, and, and you know, things that benefit all of us, things that think beyond just the self and the ego, think of us as a species, think of us as a collective, think of us as a community, if you want a system like that, I don't think capitalism gets the job done. What do you want to purify capitalism into, Elizabeth Warren? Doesn't really talk about that a whole lot. Because if you purify capitalism, you push it into a version of socialism. Corruption, greed, and the ego that it's driven by, and it's pushed forward by, all of that is the definition of capitalism is the root purpose of capitalism to be steeped in it. Based on what we saw on Super Tuesday and all of the primary races, nobody wants to purify capitalism. Either they want to keep capitalism as is because they fooled themselves to think that it's a system that's going to work for them eventually because they want to be rich too. Or they're like, you know what? Fuck being rich. I want to live a, a nice, comfortable life with my fellow man. And I want everybody to be taken care of. That's the camp that I'm in. I think we need to look past our ego and start saying, how do we help everyone? Or no, 
it doesn't seem like capitalism is really doing that. Capitalism kind of says, we'll take care of your own. That's how you help everybody. Fucking stay in your house. Your neighbor's not, they can't be trusted. They can't be trusted, you know, when you kind of give them a piece of pie or whatever the fuck. But don't. You gotta stomp on their fucking neck to get to the top. You wanna be rich, don't you? Your fucking neighbors ain't gonna help you become rich. Your neighbors aren't gonna give you this, 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 this overwhelming, unfettered level of wealth. You really need that? You really need this unfettered amount of wealth? That's what you're trying to purify. And if you're gonna purify that, you have to get rid of this need for unfettered wealth. You have to get rid of this need for greed that's in it, that drives capitalism, that defines capitalism. That ain't gonna happen unless you transform it into something different. So purifying capitalism is just a, it's just a neoliberal fucking buzzword to make you think that they want transformation. What we need is radical fucking transformation on every level. That's what we need right now. We have to fight for it. Hey everybody, uh, thank you so much for watching this video. I really appreciate it. Uh, if you are a, a uh, first time viewer uh, of these videos, first time viewer of these, uh, or a listener of these videos, please subscribe. Please make sure that you are subscribed and come back to check out other videos. I talk about uh, a variety of political, philosophical, and sociological topics uh, 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 quite often on this channel. Sometimes we also get pretty nerdy on this channel. I gotta talk about some nerdy comic booky anime type shit. I'm into that as well. So if you're into that sort of stuff and this is your first time that you're catching this video, hit that subscribe button. Make sure that you are like and subscribe to this page uh, to get all of the updates when I put uh, put out more videos. And if you are a returning user, welcome back. Thank you so much for, for, for being a returning viewer uh, of these videos. Uh, if you enjoy the type of material that we are talking about in these videos, then there is a very good chance uh, that you will enjoy my live stand-up comedy show. I'm a live stand-up comedian as well as uh, a, a guy that yells in my car. Uh, I've got live stand-up comedy tour dates coming up uh, in uh, St. Louis, Missouri, Des Moines, Iowa, uh, Moline, Illinois, the Quad Cities area, Chicago, Illinois, Indianapolis, Indiana. I'm going to be recording my live stand-up comedy album March 20th in Washington, D.C., March 21st in Williamsport, Pennsylvania, and April 2nd through the 4th at the Pittsburgh Fringe Festival. Uh, I'm also opening for my good friend Lee Camp uh, with special guest Eleanor Goldfield on some of these shows. Uh, Lee is doing a book release tour and if you purchase VIP tickets of his stand-up comedy shows, you get a free copy of his book and uh, a free souvenir of his latest comedy special as well. Uh, Lee in, uh, is going to be coming to Flagstaff, Arizona, Tucson, Arizona, Asheville, North Carolina, two shows in Asheville, North Carolina, uh, Greensboro, North Carolina, Atlanta, Georgia, Burlington, Vermont, Montreal, Quebec, Canada, Ottawa, Ontario, and so many more dates. You can check out my entire touring schedule, including one I'm going to be opening up for Lee Camp uh, at ramennoodlescomedy.com. That's R-A-M-A-N, Noodles Comedy. Dot com. Uh, grab those tickets. Come hang out with me. Come. Let's get weird. Let's get esoteric. Let's talk about some deep shit. Um, if you want to become a sustaining member to help improve the quality and quantity of these videos and uh, the writings that I would do regularly on my website, uh, there are very simple ways that you can become a sustaining member and contribute financially. Uh, first and foremost is Patreon at patreon.com slash Krish Moman. Ha ha. Uh, you can check out the rewards and the tiers and the goals that you would help support. Another way is by donating directly on my website at ramennoodlescomedy.com. R-A-M-A-N noodlescomedy.com. You see these big orange buttons uh, and there are various different levels that you can contribute. Various different levels that will get you various different little uh, prizes and stuff like that uh, that you can 
direct, directly donate onto my website if you don't want to go through the third party thing. And the last and final way is uh, by becoming a sustaining member on my Bandcamp page at ramanoodlescomedy.bandcamp.com. That's R A M A N noodlescomedy.bandcamp.com. Uh, you can become a sustaining member uh, and you get uh, unreleased uh, comedy and storytelling content that aren't released on any other live comedy albums or uh, on YouTube or any, any of that sort of stuff. It's exclusive collections for the people that become sustaining members. Also, if you listen to my podcast on Anchor.fm, if you listen to the audio version of my podcast, you can listen to it on Anchor.fm and become a sustaining member directly there. So you, you would be directly... Um, helping out the podcast uh, through, through that as well. So if you don't want to go through these third-party channels and you want to go direct, that's one of the ways to do that as well. Um, thank you guys for watching this video. Thank you guys for uh, getting all the way to the end, hearing me ramble about some shit at the very end of it. I very, very much appreciate it. I hope to see you guys at a live show. I hope you guys share this video around, show it to some people that you think would really enjoy it, or to, to some of your enemies to enlighten them a little bit more. Uh, but uh, till the next video, see you on the road.